Nuttall has been called the Purple Pinocchio and he's been roundly derided on social media as a fantasist. One of the party's biggest donors, Aaron Banks, says that his leadership is weak and the party is, quote, thrashing around for a purpose. Paul Nuttall joins me now. It was a very, very bruising by-election for you. And you then went on holiday. Yes. Where did you go? Where did I go? Yes. Uh, I, I disappeared somewhere in this country. Uh, I, I wanted to get away. I, I was being hounded uh, by the press. My family were being hounded. Uh, by the press as well. Frankly, you know, it was it was a long, difficult campaign, and I, you know, I'm back in the saddle now. That, that's that's the main thing, and uh, UKIP will move forward. After all the things that were said about you during that campaign, did you ever re think I might step down as leader? Maybe I'm the wrong guy for this job. I, I never thought I was the wrong guy. I mean, of course, you do have uh, moments of doubt. And, you did. And it's been, well, look, look, look. You know, it was a highly personal campaign uh, my family were being hounded in a way that I think most politicians will never have to go through you know when your 86 year old grandma grandmother uh, who's standing there in the dressing gown gets a camera shoved in her face when your your father's being uh, followed to work you know when the re your wider family are being harassed you know it is difficult but you know what it's made me more determined because if it beats me then it beats UKIP and UKIP has got a great future as long as it stays on the pitch. Well we'll come on to that because the thing that was said about you again and again and again was that simply you, you were not telling the truth about yeah. important parts of your life. So can we go through a few of those things and nail them down one more yes. time? Why did you say that you had lost someone close to you at Hillsborough? Well firstly I want to go back before that because there was there was an orchestrated smear campaign which I knew was coming from December which was suggesting that I wasn't actually at Hillsborough. Can I just put this on, on record Andrew because so this is really who important. Who is smearing you? Uh, Oh, well, <laughs> there was an orchestrated campaign, which I knew was coming, which, is, which was done by a political party. I'll leave it at that, OK? But well, I want to make got, one thing... You've got to tell us more. Was it, was no, it no, the no, Labour no. Party you're well, accusing well, of smearing well, you? Well, yes, I am, actually. Yes, yeah. I am, OK? Um, but they suggested that I wasn't actually at Hillsborough. I provided witness statements. I've given evidence to Operation Resolve, and I'm prepared to stand at a witness stand in a court of law. As for the cl close personal friends issue, look, it went up on my website in 2011. I didn't put it there. It was a mistake. My press officer offered to resign. I refused to accept it because it's my responsibility. I've apologised. So, so you, you, you accept responsibility oh, for that? Look, look um, I didn't check. Look, but the point is I've apologised to the people right. that matter. But look, can I also make, and I'm going to make another point here because people Quickly. need to get a bit of perspective on this. It's not as if I've lied about weapons of mass destruction. It's not as if I've taken us into an illegal war. It's not as if I've been caught in a paedophile gang or anything. No, 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 no. But the way some of the media have portrayed mm. this, it no. has been akin and it's been unfair. All right. Uh, when you were asked about Hillsborough afterwards, you said that you hadn't lost a personal friend. I've lost someone who I know. Can I ask who that was? No, because as a family, we all lost people who we knew. It was a horrendous day. I was 12 and a half years of age. I've said everything I have to say to Operation Resolve uh, and I'm, I'm right. prepared to stand in a court of law in a witness stand. Were you surprised when UKIP officials in Liverpool walked out because of what you'd said? Uh, you, well, look, one of them said that he walked out as a result of what Adam Banks said, not what I said, and I, I have his complete uh, support. Mm -hmm. uh, but look, I'm always sad when people leave UKIP, always. Uh, and I don't want people to leave UKIP, whether that's at the top of the party or the bottom of the party. We need to stick together because we need to grow. Was this the same press officer who was responsible for saying that you were a professional footballer for Tranmere Rovers, which you weren't? Well, no, I played the Tranmere Rovers uh, from but the age of 13. Uh, I'm not as a professional yeah, yeah, footballer. Look, look, I, look, from the age of 13 to 18, I was at Tranmere Rovers. Uh, I played for, for, uh, as a youngster and for the youth team. Uh, and, and yes, you know, it was the same press officer. It was a mistake. Uh, back then, she, she, she made a mistake. But I, again, it was my website. I should have checked. And was she the same person who was the over-enthusiastic researcher no, who claimed you'd had a no, PhD? No, 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 that's, that's an absolute lie, and I want to nail this one right now, OK? I've never claimed once in my life that I've ever had a PhD, and I'm on record in interviews time and time again saying I'd like to finish my PhD. That came from a LinkedIn page that wasn't even mine. OK, again on your website, um, you claimed credit for being on the management board of Northwest Training Council, no, I didn't. which you weren't. No, I didn't. Well, I've, I've got, I've got no, a no, quote hang, here. hang on. No, no, no. What happened was they offered Sorry, me... Sorry, you told the Guardian. Yeah, I beg your yeah, pardon. Ab absolutely. Your no. spokesman said... No, hang on. They, they at the time, okayed that press release, all right? So everything that was in that press release was factual. I don't know what's happened in the meantime. But you weren't on the, on the council of that, were you? No, I wasn't, but they, they asked me verbally... You said you had they, they, they asked me verbally, would I, OK? They okayed the press release back in 2009. I don't know what's happened between then and now. 
So when people say that you're a fantasist, and you've seen all the stuff on social media, no, putting you with the Beatles, well, that you're there with the Beatles, you're there at the Queen's <laughs> coronation, you're there on yes. the moon, you're there at D-Day, and so oh, forth. Oh, I'm sure I also found it, the Church of Scientology. It, it's, 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 become, it's become a, a meme, yes. it's become a joke, and that means that you have become a bit of a joke figure. And I say again, are you therefore really the person to lead a party which is having a tough time at the moment? Look. There is a narrative out there which is being spun by media outlets that have political motivations to see UKIP mm. destroyed. Of course I'm the right person to lead this party. I was the only person who could have unified the party, brought it together and ensured that it stayed on the pitch. And what UKIP's got to do now, what UKIP's got to do now is it's got to hold its nerve. UKIP will come, uh, sorry, politics will come back onto UKIP's turf in the near future once the government begins to backslide on Article 50 and all we've got to do is stay in the game. Because it's not just your opponents and enemies in the media. Aaron Banks, who was mm. your main founder... No, he's not. Well, he, 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 he certainly was for a long period no, of time. No, he wasn't. He, no, he wasn't. Listen, this, this is another media lie. Just because you, know, you tell a lie often enough doesn't make it the truth. Aaron has never been UKIP's major donor. And since I've got back off holiday, I've got a commitment from a consortium of UKIP's biggest donors that we are financially secure going forward. Because in the last quarter, you got £33,000 raised, yes. which is only £3,000 more than the Women's Equality yeah. Party and way, way behind parties like the Lib Dems, which leads people to think maybe this is the beginning of the end for UKIP. But that wasn't on my watch. You know, only a month of that was on my watch. And would you give money to a party where you have MEPs so, having altercations in so, Strasbourg? We had two leadership elections. No, you wouldn't. If you look at the next quarter, you will see there is a big improvement in UKIP donations. All right. And so when Aaron Banks compares the running of UKIP variously to running a squash club or running a jumble cell, I'm not sure which is better or worse, <laughs> what do you say to him? Uh, well, look, a lot of what Aaron says, I tend to agree with, OK? And I get on with Aaron. So you're running a double uh, No, no, no. UKIP needs to professionalise. But I want to make this point. I've only been in this role for 13 weeks. Five of that was spent fighting a by-election. Two of it was the Christmas period. Give me time to sort out this mess. And I will. And trust me, politics is going to come back onto UKIP's turf and UKIP will prosper in the future, but only if people in the party stop him fighting and people hold their nerve. Should uh, Douglas Carswell remain as a UKIP MP? Uh, well, look, this is all about this whole knighthood Issues. Uh, well, well, look, you know, I've, we've had it in mm. writing now from Douglas Carswell that he lobbied for Nigel Farage to get a knighthood and he spoke to the people involved. He's put it in writing, let's see what happens. It'll go to the National Executive from here. So, I, I just ask again, do you personally think he should remain as a UKIP MP? Well, if it's proven that Douglas lobbied for Nigel to get a knighthood. And let's not forget, Nigel Farage deserves a knighthood or a peerage. You know, he's been one of the most influential political figures in British politics since the turn of this century. You know, if it's proven that Douglas has done that, then I don't see a problem. OK, Paul Nuttall not going anywhere. Thank you very Cheers. much indeed for talking to us.